So at the end of the last video, we had done the day zero onboarding via plug and play for the ASR 1001, which we can now see in the device inventory. What we're now going to look at is doing some day one provisioning of configuration. I'm going to keep this to doing some stuff using uh, CLI templates and rather than just basic CLI, we're going to focus on pushing some loops um, and else if type statements, uh, which is quite useful, um, as you will see. So I'll hop right into the templates then. So this currently is not provisioned. If we go into the, under the provision app, we can see that the device is not provisioned. However, it does have some basic configuration on it that we pushed down as part of the day zero. That was a loopback IP address and um, the host name. Okay, so if I hop across to the template editor, I've already pre-written a template in the interest of speed, and it's under the YT for YouTube, and it's a template for front ports and access control lists. So this template is simply going to push down uh, the IP addresses for the WAN interfaces, the LAN interfaces, and a WAN facing access control list. Um, how we're going to do that is we're going to do this via um, some loops and some if statements. And the basic constructs of the two here, um, of the two used, are shown here. So the first one, um, bear in mind that anything with the two pound signs is unpassed data. So this is just data that's in the template but will not be pushed to the device. Um, so first we're going to set some variable, variable one, um, and that's going to be based off of some input. That can be user input or that can be based on some other variables that have already been defined within the template. And then for each um, entry within that variable, that should be bar one, um, we will do some action, uh, which will be the text which is after the for each statement um, and followed by an end. So an example of this and how I've used this particular variable is configuring a WAN facing access control list for IPsec. So I can establish IPsec tunnels over these interfaces. So what I've done here is I could have I could have just set a single variable and done this. Um, sorry, we could have set um, the variable here is ask user. And when I when I run this template now, we'll see that this ask user variable is is required for the user to input. If I go onto my um, form editor over here, we'll see the ask user variable is now there and it needs populating. That's fine, um, but that means the user is required to input some data. If we already have that information, we can pull it from elsewhere. So what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to write a WAN ACL, and we're trying to do that to restrict traffic going to the IP address, which is on our WAN facing port. And further down in the template, we're already asking the, um, the user or the operator, what is the ISP IP address and what's the uh, ISP2 IP addresses? What are these addresses are going to be put onto your WAN interfaces? So, as I already know that data, um, what I'm doing is I'm basically creating a variable, you know, all ISP IP addresses, and it's going to be equivalent or it's going to equal ISP1 address plus comma plus ISP2 IP addresses. It doesn't have to be a comma, um, but I'm using inserting a comma between the two here. So that I can then, from this single variable, which if I was to put in the IP addresses of 1111 and 2222, um, for these entries, when this runs, this will be pushed to the variable of all ISP addresses will equal this. So it's, it's comma separated. Um, that's good, but I still need to further break that out. I want to break that into each separate entity. So. 1111 and 2222. So now I set for every single IPS variable entry, I look into the all ISP IP addresses, I split that 
based on the delimiter. In this place, it's a comma. So you can see here, we've got a comma split at the end. Okay, and that is based on the input to this variable. No, it doesn't have to be a comma. It's just uh, what's commonly used. So I've just conformed here to standards. That uh, could be a white space or something else. Why we want to do this is we can then take that list and we can run loops against it. So what we're saying is we're going to create an access list, an extended access list, one ACL. Um, add in some remarks, and then we're saying for each address, so each address, so each entry, um, as we have here, in IPs, this is this variable, I'm going to do something. So I'm going to permit ESP to that address from anybody. And then I'm going to end that statement. And then I'm going to run another loop that says permit ESP from uh, anybody to that address. The reason I did this in multiple loops for each and then do something and then an end statement rather than having a big uh, having uh, it run for each statement and then every possible ace entry underneath is that it's much cleaner this way. Um, if I was to do it the other way, it wouldn't come out quite um, as pretty. And, and I'll show you. I'll show you what that looks like, so it makes sense. So let me just delete that, and I'll, and I'll run this now, so it's kind of obvious. So save it, and then uh, so we look at our form editor. These values already have default values populated. We'll get into what they are, but essentially we've got the ISP2 address there, and then the ISP1 address there. And if I run this via the simulation, if I hit run. This is our current preview of the template, and we'll see the, the, um, the final output once we run it based on our input variables. So I now hit run. I can now see that I've got that for each loop for each address within that uh, IPs variable. I've created an ACE entry. Now the reason I we want to do it like this rather than having a big loop is because it will end up looking a bit sloppy, and I'm gonna. Fast forward the video, rewrite the script, and just demonstrate that for you. Okay, so I've quickly edited the uh, the template. Well, actually, I've wrote a new one. Um, because the variables are were further down in the original template, I just popped the ones we need in here for the test. As you can see, I've got a for each loop running across the access list um, for every entry in IPs. So I'll just save that um, and then we can go and do a test, a new simulation. Um, test and then let's go one more one. one. Mm, two, 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 two. And if we click run there we'll see that the reason I don't like this, I can see our variables there that we've entered, um, is that it runs top down and then it repeats for every possible entry required. So we've got the access list written once for one 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 uh, and then it ends and then it's got it written again for two 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 two. And will it work? Yes. Does it look messy and sloppy? Yes. So that's why a, a little bit more um, effort required on the template. You can kind of make it look a bit tidier as we have over here. Maybe that's better. We're talking about ESP, and there's our ace entries. Uh, Ike, there's our ace entries. Um, the point is it, that we can use this to our advantage, and I'm sure you can think of more weird and wonderful ways to implement this. Okay, and then I'm going to run a similar script. This time, instead of a for each loop, it's going to be an if. Uh, or an else statement based on what the user puts in. So for variable two, that's going to be based on some user input. And then if variable two equals the value of x, we're going to run the, the next block of text. Um, else, if it, it, and, uh, it matches value of y, we'll run this set of text. Um, else, we'll just end and then move on with the template. So if the user input was z in this case, um, this is not true, this is not true, so we would just carry on and writing, uh, running the template from this point onwards.
Whereas if it was X, X is true. Therefore, the text in here, you know, set interface X with an IP address would run. Um, and then it would end and continue. So how have I used this? So I've used this because when I was writing this template, I was trying to configure ports across two different device types. Um, I ended up writing initially two templates. One was for uh, the 1001 ASR and one was for the 1100 router. The reason I had two templates was because they had different port designations. Um, so that was the only major difference really between the two. So I kind of did some exploration and came up with a, a method where we can leverage one template and just simply ask the operator, what is this device that you're going to deploy it on? So what does this look like? So um, this is our per port model. So what we're saying here is we're going to set the model based on the model router. Now this model router is the variable that's presented to the operator. Um, what I've done for this variable is here we can see the model router. I've set that as a single select option so the user can either choose a 1001 or an 1100. You know, why give them options that are not valid? So based on what the user inputs, if the model they enter is a 1001, then it will run this set of code. Else, if it's uh, 1100, it will run this set of code. If it's neither, it will just skip and carry on. But it cannot be neither because we are forcing the user in the template to select one or the other. And the difference between the two here is the uh, 1001 WAN facing or LAN facing ports are the gigabit 00. Uh, one through eight, I believe, um, where the eleven hundred it's ports one zero one. So it's difference of one figure here. Um, plus the eleven hundred, it's uh, th these are switched ports, so it's a router and a switch, uh, a swouder, as it's uh, I've heard used before, and there's a different set of configuration on there. Um, so that's quite useful if you want to reuse some templates, but there's some slight nuances between the, the devices. You can just ask the user, you know, what, what is this device or what should this look like? Um, and then based on what they put in, you can run this code block or this code block. Um, and then it ends and goes on to the WAN ports. Luckily, both of these devices have the same designations. They both use a uh, gigabit 000 and 001, as I need for this this test um, and here we're just asking the user you know what's the uh, MTU for your ISP you're connecting to what's the IESP uh, IP address you're going to assign and then mask notice this address here this ISP1 address is what I reused further up here when defining my WAN ACL which is a good example of reuse um, rather than having to prompt the operator to enter the data twice uh, so going further down, there's nothing really fancy here. Um, then we uh, add the ACL in an egress to that port um, and add in the default route um, for the front door VRF going out of that interface. And then a, another statement I have is sometimes your devices may or may not be dual homed. Um, if you don't know in advance if it's going to be dual homed, which is the case for uh, this device I was deploying, I um, asked the user, you know, what is this guy? Is he is he dual homed or not? You know, so I define the variable dual, and then I ask the user a question: Is it dual homed? Yes or no? What I've done with that variable is again, it's a, it's a multiple select option we've given to the user, which they put down here. It can, it's a yes or a no or a single select. Sorry, these are the two options they can they can present. Um, what that does is if the user says yes this is dual homed um, then the script will define a new VRF ISP2 and it will go and configure the 
ISP2 uh, one facing port characteristics. Now, and then otherwise, it'll just end and continue with the, uh, the template, which is finished. So how, how we can define these variables again in the um, form editor is we can say, uh, as we described before, we can give them certain values, uh, like um, here, this is a, an option for a single select where the user can choose one of multiple options from a drop down. These um, are IP addresses, so we set them the data type IP address, so that users can only enter IP addresses. We can give them default values as well and some, some context sensitive type help. Um, single select again, um, single select again, but you can you can make it how you want to look. So this is what's shown to the user, the key. This is actually the, the, the uh, data that will be um, given back to the variable. We did talk just now about the dual home option, yes or no. If it's yes, then the ISP2 options will be configured. If it's no, then they won't. So actually what you could do for these guys is you could say that they are um, not required. You don't have to type anything in and therefore they could have no default values whatsoever. Um, be careful with this. Why I say be careful with this is, as I uh, mentioned in a previous video, if you have a mistake in your template, the, the template will just stop. It's passed top down, it'll just stop running at the point it encounters the error. So if you say the variable of ISP2 is not required and the user selects it is dual homed, they don't configure this variable ISP2 MTU. This will just pass as is um, with this string, and this is not valid CLI input to a Cisco device, and it will cause an error. Let me show you. So I'll go to ISP2 MTU, and I will say that that is just a text field uh, with no default value, and it's not required. It was required, um, so I show you an example of like, these are required. So I'll show you um, what that looks like if it is required. So if I now edit my test, um, I could ISP2 MTU. That's the one there. So we got ISP1 gateway. I delete that, and I'll try and run. It's it's invalid. It, this is a required variable, so will not let you proceed. Whereas the, uh, it was the MTU, wasn't it, that's not required. So if I delete that and I say, no, we're not dual homed. So we go back down to our template. We can see here, if dual homed is yes, run this block, else continue. So if I run it, this should be fine. The, uh, the dual homed configuration is, is gone. It's not there. We don't need it. Or if I say, yes, this is a dual home device, then it'll lean on these, uh, variables here for the configuration and as we can see here it's um, the MTU value the variable it's it's not passed it's just not there there is there's no entry so if you on a on a device type that and hit return it'll, it'll pop up an error and the, the script will stop the, the rest of this configuration won't be pushed um, for example if I hit MTU uh, Sure, I um, get the correct interface or a interface. Oh, it's GE rather than GI. It's maybe uh, int. And it's one. So if I type MTU and hit return, it's an error, incomplete command, and that will tell the, the config push to stop. We should fix our template really, because if we're going to test this, <coughs> it's not going to work with those interface designations. Okay, so let me also show you one very useful command I like to push to my devices, and that is this here, archive feature. There's a, there's a few ways you can do this. Um, I like to do it this way. Did I copy that? Yes. Okay. So that just pushes that config down. And, and, and why I like that is um, if you're on the console here, as I am, 
any command um, that's typed in or pushed to the box will pop up as a syslog message. So when we run these templates, we can see what's what's happening and monitor it. So let's save this template and let's go ahead and, and push it to the device just to, to prove it works or, or doesn't work. I've not error checked it thoroughly, if I'm honest with you. So uh, the first thing we need to do is add this template to our profile that we configured previously. So under our network profile, this is for the, the YouTube profile, um, which is mapped to the site where our device is deployed. Um, so we can edit that profile. Uh, I'm just going to skip through to the custom configuration section. So this is our day zero template, which has already been applied via plug and play. We can go on to our day in templates and then we can choose the one that we're interested in using. And I forget the name. I think it's ASR 1K underscore YouTube. Um, it's not. It's the front ports and ACLs. Press F. Yes. So point to note here is that you can only add a single day in template. Um, which I've encountered this and it's, it's a little bit of a restriction in my opinion. So the question is what if you have uh, multiple templates that you wanted to deploy? You can only assign one in the day in template section um, versus a switching profile where you can assign multiple day in templates. Go figure. Anyway, um, how you can overcome this is you can define these composite templates and within the composite templates you can then um, nest the subordinate templates and then you can map this single composite template to the profile. Uh, thus, the ability to deploy multiple templates is a success. So there's our single template. Uh, if we go next and then save that profile. Excellent, so that is all now ready to go. So when this our device is ready, um, so if we go to provision, so templates, remember day N is pushed as part of provisioning. If we go to the site where the device is located, we can highlight that device. Under the provision, we can go and provision the device. Now this goes through the provisioning workflow, and if we go down next to our custom configuration, so the onboarding is not eligible because we've already done this as part of day zero, so the day end template is here, and because our, in our template when we defined it, we already pre populate some variables, they are already here for us. So it's uh, actually a 1001 device we are deploying um, IP for LAN A, LAN B. These are, these are arbitrary values because the ports we are using don't actually connect anywhere. Um, yeah, that's interesting. It's, uh, I've not seen it pop up like this before. I think that's because it's a oh it's a multi-select value, that's why I've made a mistake. So instead of a single select, it's multi-select. Uh, we'd need to fix that, but luckily for us, we're only going to be single home, so this is optional, and we're not going to bother. Oh, actually, it's mandatory here. Um, we're not going to we'll just select something. It'll be skipped because we're saying no to the ISP two. And then if we scroll down and select next, and then we should here be able to see the configuration that's being pushed to the box. Uh, does it show us in here? Um, I don't think it does actually. We can hit deploy. And then we'll do that now. And then if I go on to here, we should see as the archive feature is pushed to the box, we should see the commands as they are pushed in. Note that it's not just the template that's being pushed down. As you can see here, it's saying this DNAC server is not defined. That's because under the design section, uh, these network settings that are common across all sites are also being pushed now, of which we have this 6666 for ICE. Um, If I go back to here and if I open up the provision tab, we can have a look and we're seeing it's failed. That's interesting. So we can have a look and see why it's failed. If we click on the details, show the details, we can see where it failed. Deployment of the advanced configuration, our templates have failed. So 
have a look at that information here. There's quite a lot of clicking. And it's unable to push interface gig E002. Now, that is the same typo we had before, GE002. It should be gig. So what we'll find, if we look at the template, the front ports, uh, this one here, if we find that um, entry that's poor, that is hit LAN links. So remember I said the template we pushed up to the point where there is an error. And this is the point where there's an error. So all of this configuration beforehand should have been pushed down. And we can verify that. Show IP access list. And there is our WAN ACL with our variables. However, it would have continued being processed and then it got to this point here and said, uh uh, sorry, thanks for playing. You, I do not understand. Let us just grab the correct syntax then. So gigabit ethernet 002 and 003, 002 and 003. Um, let's just make sure I haven't got that anywhere else. We're not fussed about this one because it's skipped because it's for the 1100. Um, and then that is 000, and that is fine. While we're here, we can fix our um, multi select option we had. I think it was for the ISP2 MTU. Um, String the text fields, it wasn't. Oh, that's interesting because it's not come up. Hmm. Okay, maybe we just didn't commit that. And then we'll, oh, wrong one. Let me go back here and then we'll commit this. Commit our changes. I'll increment the version. We can see we have version three now. And if we go back to DNA center over here, we can then. Um, Reprovision that box and provision device. And click next through our workflow, through to our advanced configuration, our custom configuration. The variables have been pre populated as before. It's, uh, it's a 1001 correct. And then we can click on next and go. Deploy. So as we can see there, the output that the DNA center has pushed to the device has been logged to the console. Um, that's because of an archive feature we just enabled. I see the access list was configured, and then we've got our LAN ports, and then our WAN ports. Uh, and only one WAN port, because we said it's not dual homed. This now should be, oh, it's failed again, interesting. So it must have failed somewhere near the bottom. IP root VRF ISP one zero. Hmm. So let's check it out. I know that's right down the bottom of our template. So did our what did it get to? It got um, gigabit zero zero dot forty. So it did this uh... Ah there we are. Again, GE rather than gig. This is good. It's good because you can see what happens. It, it hits an error and it stops at that point, which is why it's very good uh, practice to test these before you try and roll them out in the live network. And what I mean by test them is you can write your templates, you can run them through the, uh, the simulation editor here, and then you can copy and paste them to the device and make sure the syntax is good, make sure it um, it works. Otherwise you end up doing this, which is, you know, you can do it this way as well if you like. Um, all right, third time, it's a charm. And then we provision. And it's next through that. We're happy with all the, the details, day and template. Yep, all populated, correct. Got ticks across the board. Next and then deploy. Now, now we can see now that this is gone. 
And that is the end of our template. If we hit refresh, success. That's what we wanted to see. My R key has been playing up for the last few days. <clears throat> okay, interesting point here that I'd like to highlight is that although this command is in the running configuration, it's not in the startup configuration. But why, you ask? Well, that's a uh, show fun. <laughs> show me the fun. Show run. Um, it's because we're missing a keyword at the end of our template. And I think the rest of you would agree it's useful to save the running configuration to the start configuration after a change. <laughs> um, if we go down to our template and we type end, not to be confused with this end, this is the end of the, um, the loop, uh, which is our if loop, if then else. So the end is now gone in, and we commit that. What I should do. So now if we go back to the DNA center, as we saw there, when I hit refresh, we're now seeing that that template is saying out of date. And the reason that's saying out of date is because it knows that we've provisioned the front ports and ACLs template, but knows now that we've made a change to that template, which is quite useful if we've got um, uh, for example, uh, our, our network is, is 100 devices and we have the policy that uh, every device has the same uh, VRF configuration on, is in every VRF that we use in our network is, um, is deployed in every device. And this makes it easier for us to roll out new uh, VRFs and new services because we just update the template and add the new VRF in. When we do that, we'll be able to see what devices are compliant or not compliant based on this being out of date. Not to be confused with compliance. This isn't a compliance tool. It's just uh, saying this device is not running the current version of the latest template. Okay, so let's provision this guy. And if we provision him, the only change we've made here, um, ladies and gentlemen, is the end keyword at the end of the template. Uh, everything is green, the front port's happy, next, and deploy now. Okay, that is finished, uh, success, and let's check this out. So show run, include IP root, that's there. Show startup config, IP root, it's now saved to the running configuration. I think you would agree that that is quite a useful feature to have. So this concludes uh, this part of the video. Um, we've just explored how to do some day and pushing of templates. Um, we've alluded to how we can nest those templates into composite templates should you have more advanced requirements. Um, some key things to note is we can uh, predefine some variables. Some are required, some are not. And uh, we need the end keyword. It's important we have that at the end to save the configuration. Don't forget that if there's an error in the template, it will just stop at that point um, and not process it any further. Okay, in the next video, I will explore how we can do um, pushes of templates uh, with composite templates and any sort of tips and tricks I have around there. Okay, thank you. Uh, I hope this has been informative.